offer to give it a go, definitely. But um, no, they didn't win. And then it was horrible because the uh, female blackbird was like, like keening for ages, like just wandering around on the floor, like doing this horrible distress call. Oh, it was awful. So I suppose <laughs> that's become cemented in my psyche, Bob. That's what it is. And now when, when well, I see a magpie, I run out in the garden and do this cat noise and they fly off. <laughs> Can I tell you another tip of what to do with um, slugs and snails? Yeah, yeah, Well, I've got do. a few. Um, mm. You can collect them up. But one of the first ones is you can collect them up and just take them down to the um, duck ponds and feed mm. them to the ducks instead of bread because bread's actually not very good to feed ducks because it's got no nutritional, um, um, no nutritional value at all for them and it just fills them up on stuff that's not going to nourish them in any way whatsoever. So you can actually gather them up and you can um, throw them to the ducks and they go mental for them. They love them. Mm. Another tip I've just been told as well, if you, if you um, want to get attract slugs, is to get one slug and to chop it up and then and kill it and then obviously and then all the rest of the slugs will come and eat it so that's another way of attracting them <laughs> yeah well i i've tried a little thing at the allotment i think i might have mentioned it with them um, vaseline on upturned um flower pots so with the bottom cut off and then vaseline smeared around the tops and then the plants obviously in the middle so um I'm not sure. I haven't been up there in the last few days, so uh, I don't know if that'll have worked, but uh, we shall see. <laughs> Some of my pots are on um, gravel as well, and they don't like going over gravel either. So, No, anything rough like that's good, isn't it? I've, I haven't tried it myself, but I've heard coffee grounds. And I another one that I got told mm. by one of my friends is, um, you know, the common garden snail? If you if you get it and you you put it into a container and collect quite a few of them, and you mm. feed them on herbs for a few weeks, mm. and they they taste really nice cooked in garlic with more herbs. Oh no way! <laughs> Herby snail. <laughs> not well, much. Different, uh, not much different from eating mussels or something, would it? Really? I was no, about, not at all. About giving it a go, personally, I thought, why not? Definitely. Oh, no, I've got no food prejudice like that. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's like, you know, the whole horse meat scandal thing that, you know... You need to add a bit of extra salt, though. <laughs> I think the herbs, I think that's why you feed them for a week or a minimum of a week beforehand on, on different herbs. Oh, that's, and, that's the flavour, but to get it yeah. like a mussel, you need to add... Because the mussel's out of the sea, isn't it? So you need to add salt. Uh, yeah, season it afterwards, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good plan. Yeah, I do. You eat my lettuce, I'll eat you. <laughs> oh, I'll definitely try them. Yeah, definitely. Although I think I mentioned before, I did see Hugh Fernley Whittings though cooking up slugs and they were washing them, and there's just these slime rages coming off them, which kind of put me off a bit. But um, you know, you can't you can't not try something like that, can you really? It's just, what's the point in living if you're not going <laughs> to have a go? <laughs> uh, I think I definitely would. But, uh, yeah, I have resorted to putting some beer traps down, I have to say. But we were talking before as well, weren't we, about, you know, there are, there are plants that um, slugs and snails won't touch. You know, I think me and Bob were talking before about... Um, kind of the synchronicity and the the observations in a garden that if things that are there are naturally oh that came out backwards if things that are meant to be there are there it kind of works in in harmony really um and i've found that because the slugs don't eat um that land cress nothing seems to eat that it doesn't get green fly or anything it's amazing <laughs> so it's obviously meant to be there <laughs> so and I think you know there's a number of plants like that so um, it's definitely worth sort of researching into those I mean the bramble's another one that's an amazingly resilient plant that doesn't need any help at all um, and the nettle we've been stockpiling nettle soup this week <laughs> hello oh hello you're still there it went really quiet then everything sounds different because I'm on my phone it's because everyone's muted 
with the nettles, if you just steam them, yes. and that's all you need to do. And it, they're way tastier than spinach, and you don't get that little dry taste in your mouth afterwards. Mm. Yeah, so I think um, that's Sudama. Yeah, Sudama, are you there? You were just saying you'd made pakora, wasn't you? With nettles earlier. Is he there? No, oh yeah, he's yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's oh. right. I made some net. I just cut the top bud where the fresh nettle leaves are growing. Like I just cut a load of them off and made some uh, gram, gram flour, a few uh, spices, fried them, and they were really nice. Excellent. Uh, it does. Sounds like I love pakora as well. I might try that one. Yeah, well, we we stopped piling soup for nettle fest, you see, because that's in the 7th of July. So um, we're making Please. a load. Yeah, we're making a load up to uh, freeze because it freezes really well too. Um, so, yeah, and then we're hoping to have a little, you know, a load of herbs and stuff that uh, when we serve it out, people can sprinkle on top and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, we were down at the allotment today actually because we planted these trees up, didn't we, for the little forest garden. They're all doing well. So I was really chuffed because I didn't manage to get down there for a bit. But um, everything's taken. The um, Siberian pea trees doing really well. They're really pretty little plants as well. Have you, is, have you guys come across those? I haven't. <clears throat> No, are they some sort of fern or something? Um, no, it's it's a small tree. Um, I'm sure they it's it is from Siberia. It's really really hardy. I'm sure they used to plant them municipally. Um, certainly around here. When I was a kid, I remember them out on streets because they're um they're small and they have um the flowers look a bit like wisteria, you know, like a hanging blossom like that, but they're yellow. Um, and then they have lots of lot, tiny little pods, which are edible. So, and then if you leave them to uh, mature, um, you can actually save the seeds like um, lentils or, um, you know, uh, and then use them in stews and soups through the winter. So it's a really interesting tree. Are they similar um, to laburnum then? Um... That's a pretty similar description to laburnum, and of course that's poisonous. No, because they have um, like segregated leaves, and um, the leaves are different to laburnum. Again, I'll have to oh, I make a list. I can never. I'm never going to remember all this stuff. I've said I'm going to put links to. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but if you go on the plants for a future website, I think I've mentioned that one before. You know, that's an amazing resource to um, look up plants and stuff. I'll put another link up to that. Um, but no, because it is an actual tree, Bob, and it's from Siberia. Siberian pea tree. I wonder if it is, the, the leaves, yeah, the leaves are similar to sort of members of the pea family, you know, there, but they're more elongated. Um, yeah, definitely look it up. I haven't um, actually tried it before, but I mean, I'm so interested in finding these like alternative resources to stuff like rice and, you know, um, the kind of things that are available in the local area. So if, if that crops well and grows well, which it seems to be, it could be a really useful plant. Look forward to hearing about that one then. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But I think, do, do you um, grow mostly just native plants, Bob? Um, not really. It's, I mean, most of what I grow tends to be along the herbal route. Mm. A, they're really expensive. And it's never quite the same when you go and get herbs out of a shop. No. Um, and my other... And just my favourite stuff. I mean, I haven't for a couple of years, but I really like runner beans and, you know, proper summery stuff like that. But m most things that are easy to grow, um, I'll chuck a couple of potatoes in that have gone to, you know, gone to the seed. 
Um, just so that every, you know, maybe for two meals a year, I can dig a few potatoes out of the garden. But mm. yeah, in the main, I just grow herbs. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I'd like to get a bit of a, a bigger selection of herbs in the garden this year. So, my rosemaries have died, though. I had two fantastic bushes of rosemary. I don't know why they've died. They've just completely wow. died back. They're one of the hardiest ones as well. Mm, mm. I don't know. The, the only, well, there's, there's a lot of ants out there. So I don't know. I know they do grow well in kind of open type soil that's gravelly. But I, so I don't know whether ants around the roots would bother them. I'm not sure. Um, mine, mine survived the winter and my lavender outside. My jasmine died, but that's really delicate. I knew that would die really. Mm. Put it in. Mm, mm. But my, yeah, no. Mine are in pots. Cause like I said, most of my stuff is in pots. I even grew grow, grew my um, beans in a pot. You know, just um, four bamboo sticks tied at the top spread out evenly around the pot and then just twirled them up as they just grow yeah. up around it and that's just in the in the pot so you don't actually need a lot of space to get a lot of food do you not at all not at all and i mean really in permaculture terms um you should kind of be, there's a school of thought that where you should be kind of thinking about the smallest place space possible you know so rather than thinking I want to get acres of land thinking how much can I provide from this piece here, you know. Um, and, and yeah, it's true. It is actually quite a lot, you know, in a relatively small space. So My fruit trees are in them pots as well. I've got four fruit trees and they've got blossom on them this year. Um, last year was the first year and they didn't have any blossom, but I've got blossom this year. So uh, I'm not actually yeah. sure what they are. I did buy five and one of them died. Um, mm. And I'm not quite sure which one died. <laughs> no, oh, I'm always like that. Oh, you know, and you plant things and then I think, yeah, I'll remember what that is. <laughs> and then come back out there and think, God, I can't remember what's where. I've even planted a rhubarb somewhere and I can't even find it. <laughs> I don't know where I've put it. <laughs> That's shocking. You'll, you'll be able to tell in a couple of weeks, Sarah, which one died because it won't have any leaves on. <laughs> oh, I know which one's a dead one. I just don't know which which variety died. Yeah. I don't know whether it was uh, one of the apples or the pear. Or, I don't think it was the cherry because I can recognise well, the cherry leaves, and I think I've still got the plum. I'm hoping well, it was one of the apples. Pe pears usually come into blossom, or at least bud slightly before apples, if that's any help. Uh, Two of them are blossoming. Was blossoming mm. first. Uh, they possibly could be the pear. That's what I've found in my experience. The pear always comes through slight, slightly earlier. Only, only just. But yeah. Um, but I think everyone did bad with fruit last year. Well, fruit trees because um, of so much, too much rain. The Kent um, apple farmers only had like twenty percent of their normal crop. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. Well, well I mean, there was. Only there was that got badly affected because they um, uh, flower before the cider apples. So when the eating apples were all flowering, there was no pollinators. Yeah. But just later on, when all the cider apples came out, the weather got better. And, of course, we got a massive glut in cider apples now, but no eating apples, so I'm quite happy. <laughs> well, yeah, me too, because I'd like cider. <laughs> I can't drink beer. I find it a bit gross. <laughs> Definitely a cider drinker. Hey. <laughs> like it down here then, there is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do. I do love it down there, yeah. Well, and I love Wales as well. Wales is probably my favourite place in the whole world. I love it there. I went there a lot as a kid. Uh, Good for rain. Well, exactly, but like, you know, as we've said before, I'm uh, being ginger, I'm better in the rain. I was often garden in the rain. <laughs> it's safer for me. <laughs> I've got prickly heat from being at the allotment the weekend. I look really gross at the moment. I look like some kind of warty, warty troll. 
Oh, it's really awful. I'm so, sure yeah. you don't look that bad. <laughs> well, no, it's only on my hands, so, you know, it could be worse. <laughs> but they do look pretty bad, yeah. Uh, but never mind. <laughs> that's, I'm that's absolutely what you have to do. certain there's some plants in out there that will, if you make a, a cream out of them, will really help with that. Yeah, there's got to be. It's one of those things I should really take the time out to delve into properly and make up something. Um, I have got um, a few aloe vera plants. So um, usually out of laziness, when I tend to get sunburn and stuff, I just usually cut a leaf off and chop it off and rub it on my neck. Peeled, obviously. (laughs) And even that, (laughs) even that, you know... It um, helps that benefits from just oh, putting that on. So. One of the major benefits of aloe is um, to rehydrate the skin and prevent sunburn. Mm, mm. But um, yeah, I suppose we're kind of the, at this crux point here now um, in my area because it's having the time. I'd really like a lot more time to devote to kind of making stuff up like that and a lot of other creative things so we're just trying to get together and find out where we can make space to do it sort of thing so hopefully we can and hopefully I can get by doing it that's what we're angling for at the minute but it's amazing isn't it you know once you start doing these things I've met loads of people in the area that are kind of into the same thing so we're slowly forging a plan as it were so well, it's just like anything, you can't do it all at once, can you? And if you do, you, you end up getting none of it done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's one of the permaculture um, principles, isn't it? Small and slow solutions. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, it's, it doesn't matter how long you have left to live. It's something that you can hand on. That's the whole point of it it's not about having it complete in your lifetime but to have made a start so that there is something worthwhile that can be handed on to somebody else to look after yeah most and definitely yeah it's it's the well, it's true isn't it it's kind of like that I always find that thing interesting about when they say it's not a journey to the soul it's a journey of the soul so it's the doing it that's the important bit there isn't really an end really is there Absolutely it's everything's not, no. continuous so yeah. yeah nothing nothing in nature is ever finished is it no no not at all uh, it's amazing uh, well like we've said before it is you know it's a, it's a force to be reckoned with isn't it uh, yeah that's that's why it depressed me the white sky today <laughs> I didn't like it. It's like someone's taken nature away. Well, I was just about to say that's not nature, is it? <laughs> no. Well, it, it's funny, actually, because I think you posted something somewhere about chemtrails on, I can't remember what day, and it was the same here. I saw all, it was beautiful and blue, the sky, and then I think I took the kids to school and saw all these lines and thought, ah, oh. and then that's it. They just spread, they just spread across the sky, and then it was just white today don't like it <laughs> one day I know for sure exactly what it is and why mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's the thing at the minute them things I can't I can't delve too much into them anymore because it starts to take me into um, a more negative place than a positive place so just keep planting the seeds <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's it's always worth mentioning it though, um, just for the fact of people realising that actually there are loads of us that do notice. Mm. Mm. The vast majority of people don't ever look at the sky. I'm sure. No, no. Well, it's like we said before when we talked about observation, isn't it? You know. It's it's amazing what a blinkered world some people do. 
Well, if it's not if... in the sun, it's not true, is it? <laughs> well, I know, but it's even when you look in their eyes, there's nothing there. They don't eat, they're not even, they look straight at you, but they're not even observing you when you're standing right in front of them. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've, I've said this one before, it is, it's the, it's the real zombie apocalypse. <laughs> it is actually there, no one's even observed it. Because <laughs> they're not observing anything. <laughs> it's right there already. <laughs> It's not even funny, don't know why I'm laughing really. I think you have to laugh, don't you? Otherwise, you know. You just end up crying. Mm, mm, I know, I know. Shocking. But no, I've been, that's why in my garden I've got, um, oh, because mine's a rented garden as well, Sarah. So, well, I've been in here a while now, so I didn't do anything in the actual ground for a while. But then I thought, well, you don't garden for that necessarily again for the end game of having a lovely garden so I have just planted shitloads of stuff in there now but I've got two trees that I haven't planted because they need a proper home and um, one is an oak tree um, so I've tied a little ribbon around that for me and it's got a little tortoise at the bottom and then the other one is um, a horse chestnut tree um, they're amazing they're amazing trees. I mean, they're not actually na- they're not native, are they? They're native, Bob. Yeah. As far are as they? I know, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they are native. Yeah. Are they native? Yeah, I'm not sure if the um, see that's another thing. There's too many things in the world to find out about, isn't there? <laughs> I need to find out more about horse chestnuts. But basically, it's the first generation offspring of a tree that was in the garden where I grew up as a child. I loved this tree. It was my first tree friend. It kind of um, grew as I grew, sort of thing. So, and I used to call it the learning tree. Um, and yeah, I was, oh, I've got the offspring here now, and it's only about three foot tall. So I tied a little ribbon around that as well. So I've got a nice little place going on there in the back garden. And we have been getting some nice sunsets. So I sat out there the other night when it was dry and uh, watch the sunset and watch the stars come out. Um, and I actually saw two bats. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I was um, chatting with my eldest lad earlier on, and he's just been up to Scotland, and he was um, staying in a hotel that had a bit of river near it, and he went down by the river just as the sun was going down. And there really? were hundreds and hundreds of bats, and they were coming within inches of his place. Oh, that's amazing. He he stood there for about an hour, hour and a half, just watching these animals as they were, you know, obviously feeding and on all Mm -hmm. the insects down by the river. But he said it was just, um, he'd never seen so many in one go. Yeah. Oh, you know, people talk a lot about bird watching, don't they? But people should definitely get out there and go and watch bats. They are amazing to watch because, yeah, they do sort of, that's what they swoop low, don't they, to catch the insects. And there's a lot of, um, well, they are, they're mosquitoes. I mean, we've just got mosquitoes here now. They're big, horrible, midgy things. They like me as well. I've say I've got a weird kind of a body. I must have sweet blood or something because I get loads of insect bites. They gravitate towards me. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely too sweet. <laughs> yeah, it must be. I don't know what it is. don't know. I do try to eat a lot of garlic. That does deter them because you do actually sweat that out through your pores, don't you? And cider. It, it, oh, yeah, right, that's it. <laughs> garlic and cider for the rest of the summer. I can do that. <laughs> You'd be surprised when it keep away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do, a lot of it, I do scare a lot of people in general anyway, though, so I don't not make any difference. <laughs> oh, some people get frightened to come towards me. I don't know why. Please <laughs> see an image of you or Buddha. I, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I know. I know. I think it is this. Yeah, it's a Celtic warrior thing. Yeah, I have yeah, seen. That's what. Yeah, it does exist. That's what happened this week, I think, because I was feeling a bit feisty and I could feel the red mist coming on. It does exist, and I know it exists because I knew about the, the red mist myself before I read about Celtic warriors 
when they talked about it. So they're, they're fascinating, the Celtic tribes. They actually used to get really, really fired up in battle, and the the men used to, um, you know, um, work as as a team, and then the, you'd have the women, separate warriors, who'd go about attacking people, and then they used to get that fired up. When they'd finished the battle, they used to fight each other. <laughs> <laughs> and then they used to have to pour cold water over each other to calm down at the end. <laughs> so, you know, definitely. Sounds like a football match. <laughs> well, it is. It's fact, you know, I, it's, um, well, I suppose maybe it's just because I'm ginger that I'm interested in it. I don't know. But personally, I do. It's a, it's a fascinating race, a fascinating species to, uh, it's got nothing to do with permaculture, mind you. I've gone off on a complete tangent there. <laughs> uh, well, back again then. <laughs> um, but no, that was the other thing I was going to mention about my garden this week. I've had quite a lot of bees in. I've been really chuffed. Seen loads of bees in the garden. Wow, that's good. Mm, have you seen many about? Um, we've had a few white tail bumblebees um, and I've seen one red tail mm. but I haven't seen any honeybees yet but then there isn't an awful lot of flowers with pollen no, no because no. had such a long cold winter and, you know, I mean it's only just finished isn't it yeah yeah well that's why I've been so chuffed because I know I've witted away about this tiny little bed I've got in the back garden before but it, because it's got loads of those little violas in flower hundreds of them literally in such a small space i've got loads of dandelions and then the land press is flowering um so um there's there's quite a lot for them to and even the wild strawberries are starting to come into flower so there is actually quite a lot to pollinate in my garden um so and i mean i you know i'm only in a tiny little urban garden in the middle of birmingham so it's just amazing to see so I've, um, yeah, we have a lot of those red-tailed um, bees, but I have seen a honeybee. I oh, think it's at well. Yeah, it might. The, there might be more than one, but what it was hovering in the garden. I'm sure it was. Um, it was just it kept coming and hovering next to me. <laughs> I felt like I was having a moment, but then every time I saw it. No, oh maybe uh, was it not a bee, Bob? It's a hoverfly. They look like little bees, or yeah, they do. They look like little bees, but they stay absolutely still. It was big though, like a honeybee. It had got like you know, because they're a little bit more brownish, aren't they? And they've a flat back. No, it can't. No, maybe it can't have been if it's hovering. Don't Sounds know. like a hoverfly. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Yes, now, now you say it's there, right? It seems so obvious. <laughs> so, but no, we've, um, I've seen uh, quite a few, well, I've seen some peacock butterflies as well, which I'm really chuffed about because I hadn't seen those for many years, you know. I saw some last year and I've seen some this year in my garden and at the allotment. Oh, good. Mm. Um, we're short of butterflies around here. I mean, I've seen a couple of Dorset Blues, which is quite good, because they're pretty rare. Um, and, I've yeah, I've seen a couple of um, peacocks as well, but I haven't seen any red apples yet. No. They're, no, I haven't seen any of those yet. Mm. Um, I've seen some cabbage whites which I kind of get mixed feelings when I see those. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, although obviously it's not too much of a problem at the minute because there's not a lot out there they can uh, lay on. But, um, yeah, I do, uh, it always drives me mad. You know, you see them when they're like, they're hovering around the plant that they do for ages. <laughs> Like they're taunting you that they're going to lay somewhere quickly when you're not looking. <laughs> That's exactly what they do. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how, you know, it's another thing about connections, isn't it? I'm sure nature has this sense of you and your intentions, most definitely. I've been um, I've been doing this with flies. 
this is a slight tangent as well, really. We had these flies in the house a while back because they cleared a glue. Oh, it's gross. They cleared a glue factory up the road, and they obviously disturbed some animal carcass. And we had this like plague, like this biblical plague of flies. And I, I kept trying to ninja them out the house, but then they know. They know when you're coming towards them. They seem to have this sense of like, even if you're not moving really quick. Yeah, oh. I mean, tr- flies. I mean, it's the eyes they've got, isn't it? Because they've got multifaceted eyes. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, it must be really confusing looking through them, and they yeah. can see <laughs> anything coming from all around them. Whereas a lot of insects aren't quite that observant. But yeah. I find with wasps, you can communicate with wasps and get them out of you wherever you are really easily. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It, that was the thing that um, we did, I didn't get a chance to talk to Bridget about because I know she's posted some of this stuff about the bees, about their posturing. And, you know, if you go towards them and they lift their front two legs up, they're just kind of telling you to, you know, go away. <laughs> Or lift their back up as well. Yeah, it's, isn't it amazing? You know, just shows you kind of when you take it down to that level of observation, how um, simple everything is. Well, it just goes to show that they don't have any fear. Mm. Mm. I mean, that's the truth of it, isn't it? You know, their um, self-preservation mm. is a stronger feeling for them in, in fact I don't know that there is any other animal that has fear I think fear is something that is peculiar to us mm, mm. because you talk fear it's not something that's inherent in your body mm. yeah yeah well with with animals it's just purely instinct isn't it so it's um it's an abstract thing, I suppose, rather than a rationalised notion. Yeah. Uh, so, because in humans, anything can trigger fear, really, even something benign. Oh, I've gone off. Oh. <laughs> I have to stop myself there, otherwise I'll ramble on about on that one for ages. That's off the subject of permaculture as well. <laughs> Well, there's a few minutes left, so... Yeah, well, that's great. It's really nice to be able to um, chat to everyone about their garden and what's happening. So, um, didn't really... I was going to... Still haven't got round to the uh, acronyms of design, which I was going to try and touch on if we got a chance. But, um, yeah, I suppose we can kind of get down to those next week and break down what the permaculture design is from there. Um, and hopefully, yeah, I'm going to have the guys from Karuna. I need to get in touch with them. So hopefully we'll be getting them on next week or in the next couple of weeks. So that should be a good show. Yeah. Well, they're all good shows, Marie. <laughs> well, hopefully so. Hopefully so. You know, it's difficult, I think I've said before, when you can't see people's faces. Because, you know, again, it's that element of uh, interactions taken out of the equation, isn't it? And, if someone's backing away from me, I could, you can tell that I should stop speaking. <laughs> if they're backing away, they just turn it off. <laughs> and you don't know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks ever so much, Sarah, for joining us as well. No worries, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. No, it was great. It was great. It was lovely to hear about your garden. You have to uh, let us know um, how you get on and how everything comes through. I'll keep you updated to my late sowing. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Yeah. So beans, like I said, beans, maybe squash. They're great ones for late sowing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, got, yeah. I've got some squash seeds. I've got squash, parsnips, beets, carrots, loads of <laughs> tomatoes, loads of zebra tomato. All your salad leaves you can plant uh, at any time. Can they be put in direct sunlight or do I need to put them in partial shade? Uh, Depends on the leaves. Um, Often they will be direct sunlight tolerant. 
Okay. Mm. But then maybe if you put them in partial shade, because they do dry out and wilt quite quickly. So if you have them in partial shade. That's what I was thinking. You're going to yeah. be more attacked by pests in partial shade. Yeah, yeah. You see, you need an entire design system just for leaves alone, Sarah. <laughs> for my whole garden. You, you, you know what you need to do? Spider diagram. That's what you need to do. Do a spider diagram and then post it for us to have a look at. <laughs> do what a diagram? A spider diagram for your garden. What is that? If, you know, when you do the little circle in the middle and then you do the legs going off. About oh, spider diagram. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'll do a spider diagram on my garden. Don't I just draw it? Draw so, well, you can, you can do both. You can do both. Oh, God, we're running out of time now. I've started okay. on a thing. I'll post you some links about spider diagrams for permaculture design. Brilliant. Then, I'd like it cool. to be permaculture, and I wouldn't mind my garden being used consecutively each week if you want. Oh, we're off. We're off. Guys, I think we've already gone. Bye. Bye. Bye.